having some great fun. Cheers and thanks very much. Having some great fun. Cheers and thanks very much.
isn't holding you up So there's nothing I can do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. 
victory. I'm gonna see a victory.
just didn't want to. Good afternoon to everyone. Could we please stand as we receive the body? Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. You're done. Please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm your vessel. Standing as we have the opening prayer by Pastor Mark Luchan. Pastor Mark. Thank you, my brother. We want to pray and ask God's blessings upon today's service. Firstly, I want to welcome you to the First Church of the Open Bible and for the funeral service of Brother Percival. On behalf of my senior leaders, Reverend Cecil Corman and the pastoral team, we take this opportunity to express condolences to Sister Deborah and to all the siblings, to everyone here today, those who are joining online. Brother Percival has been a faithful, committed member of this church for many years, and uh, I can still picture him in my mind, taking an assistant Sister Deborah out of the vehicle as she, as both of them, they walk into church. So we want to remember Brother Percival's life and his legacy as we call upon the name of the Lord today. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, we look to you today, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, the psalmist said that when his heart is overwhelmed, Lord, lead us to the rock that is higher than I. Lord, we thank you today that we have divine comfort from above. Lord, your word says that you are the father of mercies and the God of all comfort. 
And we pray, God, today for the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that you would touch every person today, especially Sister Deborah, all the immediate family members. We pray, God, for strength from above. Lord, your word says that the eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. I pray that you'll uphold this family today, that you would keep them and preserve them, Father. I pray that you'll envelop them with your presence in Jesus' name. I pray for an open heaven over today's service. Lord, we thank you that we do not mourn as those who without a hope and we thank you, O oh God, that we have a hope that is beyond the grave. Your word says that you are the resurrection and the life, Jesus. And if any man believes in you, though he may die, yet he shall live again. And Lord, we thank you for this hope and this confidence that we have in Christ, our Lord, our Savior. I pray that you will minister to every person today. I thank you, God, for wiping away the tears from our eyes. And I thank you, Father, for your peace, which surpasses all understanding, to garrison our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Mark. We would now have a script. You may be seated as we have a scripture reading by Ken Corbett. Can? Okay. okay, we would now call on Deborah Corbett, not Mrs. Corbett. <laughs> Deborah. Sorry, I'll uh, repeat that. The scripture is taken from Psalms 116, verses 12 through 19. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people precious in the sight of the Lord is the debt of his saints Lord truly I am thy servant I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid thou hast loosed my bonds I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Thank you very much, Deborah. And now, let us welcome the praise and worship team. And you may join us. You may stand if you so desire as we give praise and worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can you stand with me? Hallelujah. We give God all the praise. We give thanks and praise to Almighty God for our life well lived. And ultimately, God has the victory. We give God thanks. There is victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you join and clap and sing with me? I heard about all story. Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious 
precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me. Jesus. Jesus. 
Sing His mercy and His grace In the mansion, bright and blessed He'll prepare for us a place When we all, when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be Oh, when we all, when we all Hallelujah We will sing will overspread the sky but when traveling things are over not a shadow not a shadow when we all when we all get to heaven for the day of rejoicing that will be when we all when we all when we all we will sing from the end we bless his name he's a great God in everything we worship and adore you Lord oh we worship you Lord we bless your name we adore you Lord hallelujah the splendor of the King Clothed in majesty. Lift your voice and sing. Let all the earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. 
our next item. Before I move on, I just want to acknowledge all the pastors in the house, those that belong to this house. I see you got Pastor Mark, Pastor Laurel, and some of you I may not know you, but all the other pastors, I wish to acknowledge you in the house. God bless you. And also, God bless each and every one of you here, you here today, because it is a blessing to be here. Amen. So we'll now have a special song by Michelle Clark, one of Percival's nieces. Michelle, where are you? Good evening, everyone. Hallelujah. I love my uncle very much. And one of the things that I would keep hold close to my heart about him is his love for prayer. And I thank God that we know we will see him again for our Redeemer liveth. Hallelujah. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only go this far? And who Show the moon where to hide till evening. Whose words alone can catch a falling star? Well, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer.
Redeemer lives. Our Redeemer lives. He's our strength. He's our hope today. May God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Michelle, for ministering to our hearts. God bless you. And may the anointing fall upon you continually. Amen. We now have a very special moment in the program, or a very special item, and that is the eulogy. It would be performed by Sidney Corbett, Percival's elder brother. Sydney. Thank you, Randy. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Carol. I'm the sister. I'm Percival's sister. I will say again, good afternoon, church. I must thank everyone for taking the time to share this moment with the Corbett family. My name is Sidney Corbett, the eldest of 11 siblings, then Percival, now deceased, Ansel, Carl, who is by my side, Ken Martin, Noel, Denise, Deborah, Jim, and Kelvin Jr., our pastor. The chain is broken. The truth, truth engages the mind. Beauty engages the heart and imagination. Goodness engages our very humanity and inspires us to love deeply. Percival encompassed all three. My brother, Percival Corbett, fondly called Percy, was the second of 11 children born on the 9th January 1955 to Kelvin and Jill Corbett. Percy spent his formidable years at the family's residence, number 88 Cedar Drive, Pleasant Vale. He attended Pleasant Vale Government School from where he passed the common entrance exam for San Fernando Government Secondary, MOTSEC as we all know. On completion of college, he attended the San Fernando Technical Institute and obtained a diploma in engineering. Percy also entered an apprenticeship program at Eugene St. Madeline, we know as Carony, from where he was sent to England to further his studies in engineering. Deborah, his young, beautiful wife, accompanied him on his journey and continued to be by his side until his passing on July 13th. 20 to 2023. I speak here of 45 years of marriage life. On the closure of Carony 1975 Limited, Percival went to Atlantic LNG where he spent three years. He was a senior electrical and instrument engineer at both workplaces and in fact his services were still retained part-time at Eugene until his passing. Percival was a fantastic brother, a loving uncle, a loyal friend, and an exceptional husband. He was very accommodating. You could have called 
this man at any time and you got a listening ear. He rarely extended himself. And Deborah, to whom he lovingly referred to as my wife, could attest to that. He was one of the founders of the Corbett's Christmas dinner. And for the most part, it was held at his home. He never forgot someone's birthday or anniversary. Percy and I, as the first and second, shared a very special bond. My brother always had a calm demeanor, an, enga an, an engaging smile, and a definite yes or no, a man of his word. Percy, in, 19, in 2000, sorry, and 16, Percival discovered he had a medical challenge. And I must thank all, siblings, all my siblings for their attentive support and love to Percival. And in this, I include his in-laws, the McLeans, who stood there with us. Family matters. It really does. Deborah, as Percy would say, my loving wife, a gem of a sister-in-law, I say thanks to you. From us, the Corbett's, deep, deep within our hearts. In the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 6, verse 8, this is what God asks of us, only this, to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with your God. And Percy did all. Thank God. Family mattered a lot to Percival Emmanuel Corbett. Farewell, my brother. You will always be in our hearts. I thank you. Thank you very much, Sydney and Carol. I was asked uh, to represent the McLean's family to pay a short tribute on behalf of all of them. So whatever I have to say would be from myself, the Ramutas, that is, Pat and I, and also the McLean. And so Proverbs chapter 20 verse 6 tells us, a man proclaims, sorry, let me repeat that. Many a man proclaims his own loving kindness and goodness, but a faithful man who can find. When we attend funeral services, we hear many things about the deceased. And sometimes we may hear things that can be very encouraging to others. I myself often ponder, what will people say about me? Or what was my legacy when I depart this planet? But today, I have the distinct honor to say a little about my friend, brother-in-law, brother in Christ, Percival Emmanuel Corbett. Percival, while he sojourned on planet Earth, filled many roles. Roles such as husband, brother, brother-in-law, uncle, friend, neighbor, employee, work colleague, mentor, role model, and Christian. So I just would like to take a little time to glimpse at a few pages of personal, Percival's life. A faithful steward. In all the roles Percival filled, he was faithful to the end. He was willing to serve. He had a heart that yearned to serve, and he served willingly and faithfully. And he always did it 
with a cheerful heart. Proverbs 17 and 22 says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. Let me tell you this. Percival was good medicine. Percival was a man of integrity. He conducted his conduct and conversation, among others, resulted in great respect for him. He didn't have to tell people, respect me. And that's the way we should be. Our conduct, our character should, dis should tell us we are to be respected, not demanded through our mouths or lips. As an uncle, he loved his nieces and nephews. And I'm speaking on the McLean side. Carleen, Shelley, Renee, Ryan, Ronan, Dinell, Joel, Nadej. It was very heartwarming to hear them say, Uncle Percival. It sounded like music to my ear, with each one having their own unique tone. All of this displayed the quality of the relationship he shared with them. Yes, Deborah, he and Deborah had no offspring, but that did not matter to them. They loved their nieces and nephews as their very own. He and his wife, Deborah, cared a lot about them and would always remember their birthdays and other events. At one of these events, Percival was delegated the family meal prayer at every meal. Now, one thing I must say with Percival, Percival loved to eat. Eh? He had a very, very hearty appetite, even down to the end. He loved to eat. And since he loved to eat, he loved to bless the meal because he recognized every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And of course, his wife has a very, very sweet heart. <laughs> All right? His re relationship with the other in-laws, with the McLeans, was always unique and easygoing. It was also very healthy. Pat and myself, Benedict and Sherry, Noble and Natasha, all had a, a natural bond with Percival. He treated all of them, all of us, I have to say, as though we were siblings and we came from the same womb. Percival was a generous man. He loved giving. He and his wife, Deborah, was always willing to give, and they give cheerfully. He was a humble man. I've been around. And I've met all sorts of people. But among them all, Percival was the most humble man I ever met. He never allowed his qualification or status to define him. His humility and contentment is what defined him. As a husband, Percival met the youth of his the wife of his youth over 45 years ago. It was love at first sight. I know that Sydney said something, but I can't leave this out. They were the perfect couple. These two people, I would say, meant, were meant for each other. They were each other's eyes, ears, mouthpiece, hands and feet. You see Deborah, you see Percival. You see Percival, you see Deborah. They understood what was meant by, and the two shall become one. He understood his wife was bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And that is something for all of us as men. We ought to ponder on that. They were faithful to their vows. But in all of that, do not think that they did not have disagreements. Yes, they did. But you see, Percival, with that heavenly and angelic smile, would pacify the situation by saying, yes, dear. Yes, my dear lady. You know? And he was faithful. He was a good and faithful husband, even on to the end. 
as a Christian. Percival was a man of prayer. He loved the Lord Jesus. He served as an usher in this assembly. And he did it with diligence. He was an evangelist in his own right. And his style of evangelism was lifestyle evangelism. And so, finally, in concluding, I can say this with confidence. Percival's life was a living epistle read by all. He was a prince who walked among men. He served his generation and fell asleep. Thank you, Lord, for the time he shared with us. God bless you. We will now continue with a few tributes and we have to try to make it short. So I trust that you have it uh, ready. Quickly, you got to do it quickly. I know last night we had quite a lot of uh, tributes set. So if no one is willing to come forward, I would now call on Minister Stacy Basdeo to minister to us in song. Let's give her some encouragement, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first off, I would like to say um, thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pastor Rani, for giving me the opportunity to um, be part of this homegoing service of a great man. First of all, it was a great man. And you know, the Bible tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we know right now he is in the arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what we believe. And if there's one song I'm sure that he would have in his heart would be this one. Because you see, the God he served, I know, is faithful. And... I believe that he will sing this song and have this song in his heart towards him. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Father. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, God. My loving father, oh, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not thy. Oh, they fail not. Where's thou hast been, thou forever will be. And great is thy faithfulness. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed by hand. Oh, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Oh, summer and winter. 
winter of springtime and harvest oh sun moon and stars in their courses above join with all nature in man of old witness oh to Thy faithfulness, O morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, Thy hand hath provided. Oh, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Listen to the last verse. It says, pardon for sin. And only the Lord can give peace that endure. Oh, thy no. And to God, yes, He gives strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. You see, blessings are mine with. And if you don't know the Lord today, this is the day to get to know him. Because God is not a God of tomorrow. He's not a God of yesterday. He is a God of today. So today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Thank you very much, Stacy. I now have the pleasure of uh, introducing Sister, forgive me here, Pastor Laurel, who will now bring greetings on behalf of Pastor Cecil Kwamina, Senior Pastor of this Assembly. Let's welcome her. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. I bring condolences from our senior pastor, Reverend Cecil Fomina, and our usher's ministry, particularly to Sister Deborah and the members of the Corbett family who attend this church and the whole clan. I heard 11. <laughs> God bless you richly. Brother Percival was a committed member of this church. He was very dependable, member also of the usher's ministry where he served over 15 years. He was a gracious gentleman. This was very evident in his care for Deborah. He would make sure that she was seated comfortably first and then gave himself fully to his duties subsequently. He was well loved by the ushers, part of the team. As we all know, he had a cool, quiet, humble spirit. He was very generous and he gave no trouble, very easy to work with. When we think of Brother Percival, I think of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, but gentleness stands out. Against such there is no law, the scripture says. Brother Percival was baptized on the 17th of December, 1995, and he received membership on February 25th, 1996. He was faithful in his devotion to God, a strong desire to grow in the things of God, and he enrolled and graduated from our church's program, the Christian Education Training Program, and the Christian Service Training Program. Pastor Corman and the entire leadership takes this opportunity to support these sentiments. We all feel the same about him. What stood out to us, he was a family man. He was physically strong, tall, but he was very tender on the inside. And this was demonstrated in his life and even as was echoed by all that was shared before. He will be sorely missed. We always remember that gentle, sweet smile. We want to let the family know our prayers and our support continue to be for you. We remember you in prayer. And however we can assist in this time of bereavement as a church, we are available. So God bless you richly as we stand in support in your time of bereavement and loss. God bless you. Thank you very much, Reverend Laurel. And I know how we now have a special tribute by Minister Richard Dorridge. Let me just say this about um, Richard. Many of you here wouldn't know that. But I've known Richard from a teenager. And since then, he has been playing the, the trombone. We used to live across the road from him. And when Richie started this trumpet, he wasn't as serious. My mother used to say, oh my goodness, look Richie again, boy. <laughs> you know, the whole street, you know. And there was another young guy who used to live on the block. God bless his soul, Mike. He got Mike to play the trumpet with him. So this is an anointed man. Let's give him a God bless you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brother Randy. I thank God for the opportunity to minister in this significant home going. Uh, I was sitting in the van on Sunday morning when I heard of the passing of a Corbett. I know I know so much of the Corbetts. Um, so right away in the church, I sent a text to Kelvin, who I would have spent most of my time with playing music and so on, to ask him which of the Corbett would have blessed us. And he quickly texts back to me, let him know it's Percival. Um, now, I, even though I know Percival, I cannot remember having any direct interaction with him. So he had to give me a little description, tell me the fair skin one and whatnot. And as I continued with the discussion, everyone who, who mentioned who he was, they mentioned how he used to take care of his wife. And I think that's a real compliment and something that we, we all should try to embrace. And uh, I'm, I know most of you will agree with me that we're all looking forward to that day when the last enemy death will be in history. 
So I thank God for this opportunity and what we have to do in the meantime is comfort one another. So to his dear wife, I want to say God will take care of you. I pray as I play it will be a blessing to you. Thank you very much, Richard. And now we come to one of the most important aspects of this meeting. Uh, let us please stand as Reverend Dr. Kelvin Corbett ministers the unadulterated word of God to us. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, it's a good day. Come on, it's a good day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Could you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're the best looking person I've seen for the whole day. <laughs> it's, good to, it's good just to worship the Lord. Amen. <laughs> and we're in church, so we speak the truth. It's okay. Right? Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. You know, it's an honor to be here this evening. Never thought I would have had to do this, but it's a part of life. Amen? Hallelujah. It's an honor to be here. I want to do a song before uh, I, 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 I minister God's word. So if we could just put it up for me. You know, God is a good God. 
In spite of what you're going through, God is a good God. Come on, God is a good God. You can put it up anytime. God is a good God. You know, there are disappointments. That's it. You face trials in life. You know, but I want to just sing this song. And please pay attention to the words in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of us know God is depending on us to be faithful? God is depending on us to fight a good fight. God is depending on us not to give up, but to keep the faith. Hallelujah. We're pilgrims on a journey of a narrow road. And those who've come before us, they line the way. They are cheering on the faithful, encouraging the weary. Their lives are stirring testament to God's sustaining grace. But you know what? We are surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses. Now let us run the race, not only for the prize but as those who have gone before us now let us leave to those behind us a heritage of faithfulness passed on through godly life in the name of Jesus oh may all who come behind us find us Faithful May the fire of our devotion Light their ways May the footprints that we leave May it lead them to believe And the lives we live Inspire them to obey Oh, may all who come behind us Find us faithful. We're going to serve God to the end. Amen. No matter what we go through. Listen now. After all. Oh yeah. After all. Our hopes and dreams have come and gone. And our children safe through all we've left behind. And the memories they uncover Becomes a light that leads them To the road we each must find Oh, may all who come behind us Find us faithful May the fire of our devotion Light their way Percival, 
he was found faithful. He fought a good fight. He ran the race. He kept the faith. Because he lives. Could we sing that? I can face tomorrow because he lives. Because he lives. Come on, sing it from your heart. All fear is gone. All fear is gone because I know because I
We're leaning on you, God. We're trusting on you, God. Our hope is in you, God. We don't know the future, but you know it, God. You know it, Lord. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Can you give him my faith a hand, the praise of thanksgiving? Thank you, God. We know you're in charge. We know you are in charge. Lord, speak to us today. Bless our hearts, oh God. Transform us into your image and into your likeness, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say, amen, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I am Reverend Dr. Kelvin Corbett, Senior Pastor of Shekinah Discipleship Ministries. And it's an honor. This is my home church. This is where I was saved. This is where I received the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I never, I'm always connected here. <laughs> Amen. I'm always connected here. You know, I got baptized in this church. I learned many things in this, in this church from great people of God. And I thank God for the first church of the Open Bible. My senior pastor, Pastor Cecil Quam, and I thank him and all the pastoral team, Pastor Laura, Pastor Mark, Pastor, all the pastors. I want to thank you. I don't want to start calling names and actually I start to forget. You know, I don't want to forget a name. <laughs> you know, it's an honor to stand here and release God's word. And I'm not a pastor who likes to just talk from my head. And how many of us know people, a lot of people have eloquent words and they know how to talk. You know, there are many people who can sell an Eskimo or a fridge. You know that? Do you know it's have people who could really influence by, by the words that they use when they finish, they melt you so much. I tell people like that, like tell a young lady, stay away from men like that. You know, we don't want them to come and bring them kind of thing. We don't want them around. How many of us don't like, you know, you know, eloquent word is nice, huh? I'm not down in it. It's nice, but I don't believe in it. I like to stick to the word of God, you know? And today, I want to share the word of God with us, and I want the word of God to speak to us. You know that when it is finished, it was not Reverend Dr. Kelvin speaking to you, but you saw it in the word of God yourself. Is that okay? You see, because many of God's people, do you know we are all God's creation, but not all of us are God's children? And there is a difference. We need to understand that. We are all God's creation. He created everything. But you see, when we were born, there was, some, there was a person called the devil who was a liar, a deceiver. And what he came, he, did, he came and deceived men. You know, I was now talking about using eloquent words. You could use eloquent words and get many people deceived. You could con many people. You know, I had a friend, they, they text me and they say, hey, someone from Nigeria text me and they say that they call it from Coca-Cola and they win $850,000. You know, and in order to get the $850,000, you have to send $10,000 to them. You know? And I turn and I said, well, listen, why don't you tell that person who Promise you the eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Take ten thousand from it and send the balance. <laughs> you know, the, the, when, when that is the person I got the phone, they don't want to have. No, no, they say you have to send the money first. You know, in this life we have many people who are de being deceived. You know, and we gotta understand. You know, many people are waking up in the morning thinking they have the keys to heaven. My name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Everyone thinks like that. You ever hear people talking about, I remember a partner talking about, boy, he going and he have four women, he going and lying with and he praying and asking God for help to deal with them four women. I say, what am I hearing here? Huh? Real talk, you know, I, 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 again, I'm a pastor, I like to be real. I don't like to talk and make things look, you know, how many of 
us are fed up of fake people around us. They're fed up of fake. It's better we have someone who's genuine and can talk with you. Amen? So we got to understand, firstly, you know, I have given some scriptures I would like us to read, but I want to start with Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21, I'm going to let us read. Is it okay if we read the Bible? Is it okay if the scriptures speak to us? Amen? I'm not going to be long today, but I want to share the word of God with us. Look at what the Bible says here in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. What is it? it says firstly, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall what? Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because everyone is of the opinion, I have a key to enter in, you know. I have a special room already made for me. You don't know who I am? Hey, I am, hey, Kelvin is my name. I must enter into heaven. And the Bible is saying, no, 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 not everyone who saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, doeth the will of my Father, doeth the will of my Father, doeth the what? The will of my Father. Do it the will. Therefore, that means God has a will for you to do. He has something for you to do. But my people are destroyed. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed. Why? I want us to read it. I want us to see it for ourselves. Because I have some things I want to share with all of us. What does it say here? Let's read it together. My people are what? destroyed for what? A lack of knowledge. But it's not just a lack of knowledge. Look what he says. He says, because thou hast what? Rejected the knowledge. How many of us know knowledge could come to you and you can say, I don't want to listen to you. I'm not taking you on. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject who? D. I will reject you. That thou shalt be no priest to me, saying thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget who? Are we seeing what the Bible is saying here? Because we reject the knowledge, we heard the truth, and we decided to reject it. God said, I will even reject your children. The children have nothing to do. But what? Because of the decision you made, God decided to reject your children. When we look in the book of Psalms 16, 116 and verse 15. Psalms 116 and verse 15. I want us to see something here. The Bible says, hallelujah. I'm up, I'll, I'll move a little fast. It says what? Precious in the sight of the Lord is what? The death of who? His saints. Precious. It's beautiful. I remember Deborah saying about Percival every night he goes to sleep. He was going to sleep. He played, take the stage. I did not know that song until I heard it. I said, take the stage. So I started to think, take the stage. I'm Marshall. <laughs> I want to know what take the stage is this about. You know what I mean? But when I heard that song, I said, wow, that's a deep song. You know, and God, and, and, and I know my brother. Love the Lord. Every time we were taking him for his chemotherapy, you know, he's always talking Jesus talk. As a matter of fact, he had more faith than God, in God than we were, when we were taking him. He had more faith than, don't worry about me, you know, I'm going to be, and when we taking him back home, he want a roti. <laughs> you know, we thinking, wait, this man coming out that chemo, he's supposed to be a little more, you know, down. but no, he excited, he ready to come home. He good to go. You know, and when we finish, I reach home, he's telling everyone individually, thank you for taking me. Thank you for taking me. Thank you for taking me. He never left. I said, wow. This man, we're supposed to be encouraging him, but he's encouraging us. You know, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. When we look in the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says what? In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, verse 2, what he said? Moses, my servant, now, he's dead. 
Percival served 68 years upon planet earth. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. He served and he served well. Most important thing, he found the Lord. And he died in Christ. Thought we were going to get a big club day because that's a great thing to celebrate. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I always share with everyone, it takes a man to be a Christian. Yeah. Any, this to be, it takes a fish with backbone to swim upstream, you know. Any jellyfish just, just do what? How the river roll? They go in because they, they have no back. Let's do me. It takes a man to serve God. Oh, that's real tight, real talk. It takes a man to serve God. Well, you don't want to clap, I go clap. Yeah, that's real thing. <laughs> because we have to know what it is to stand up. And we stand up against all odds. You know, I saw this thing on via Facebook. The saying, we queer, we hear, we coming for your children. I said, what? We queer, we hear, we coming for your children. I said, huh? Hey. But you see me. I hold the front, just call me radical. I don't care, call me all your word, but I want to tell you something. I said, I am here. And you are taking my children. You can say what you want. You queer and you hear, you coming for my children. Right meat, right meat, but the wrong gravy. Right meat, wrong gravy. Not my children. You're coming for children who people want to allow you to take. But you see me, as for me and my house. Hey, as for me and my house. As for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. We're not bowing to no, bless to me. Everybody can have a choice and everybody can have a decision and everybody can have an opinion. But the last time I remember, when I wanted to put on my shoe, I put it on. Nobody put it on for me. So you could tell me, Kelvin, put on a size six shoes uh -huh, in a size 11 foot. No way. I am not doing that. And likewise, when they come to want to tell you their things, no far fact. You have the right to say no. Yeah. At the end of the day, they can come with all what they want, but I know for me and my house what we're going to do. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, Thou and all these people in the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. Now, thebs arise. You have your race to run now. Corbett's family, we have our race to run. McLean family, we have our race to run now. Percival fought his fight. Percival has run the race and he kept the faith. He, right now, the crown of life, he partying right now with Jesus Sunday. He is celebrating with God because he died in Christ. And we have to understand now it's time for us. Do you know what? Hear me, a lot of stuff coming our way just now, you know. A lot of stuff is coming our way just now, you know, and it's attacking no one else but the church. You watch it and see who they're really attacking. It's the church and the word of God they're coming against right now, you know. And God is saying, my people are destroyed. Why? For a lack of knowledge. So today, Pastor Reverend Dr. Kelvin Corbett wants to educate us a little bit. And I will not be long. When we look at the book of, 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 of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. I want to start there. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. I want to tell us about life. I want to tell us about this life we are living in. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, what does it say? The Lord said, who said it? God said it. So we know for a fact, hey, this is not Paul, this is not nobody else but God speaking. Normally I will tell my church, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, listen up. <laughs> God said. The Lord said, what? What the Lord said? My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. 
Yet his day shall be what? 120 years a man shall live. How long God said it for? 120 years. Who said it? God. God said a man shall live 120 years. This was his heart's desire. And then when we check in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 22, I want us to read something. Look what the Bible says. Except those days should be what? Shorter. Hmm. How many of us know evil waxing worse? How many of us know evil waxing worse? Have you ever seen, you know, when you're watching the news, a neighbor saying, wait now, but this gentleman used to be smiling all the time. I never knew he was a mass murderer. My neighbor, I never knew he was like this. And he never knew he was like that. The Bible says what? Hell from me need is raising up to meet Jesus at this coming. In the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 9. Hell is raising up. Evil is waxing worse. Except Jesus. And God knows. Listen to me. I can't leave my people to suffer so long. I can't leave my people to, to suffer so long in the earth. You know why? Because some of them, the devil might catch some of them. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Why God shorten the days? To make sure that the flesh get saved. You and I. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Hey, do me a favor. Don't say, tell him about God really care about you, you know. <laughs> For the elect's sake, God is shortening the days. And that's why when we check in the book, in, 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 in the book of, of Psalms 90 and verse 10. Psalms 90 and verse 10. What does to look at that? Psalm 90 and verse 10. What the Bible says now? The days of our years are now what? Three scores and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet if their strength, labor, and, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Firstly, God said how many years he was giving us? 120. He shortened the days because he knows what? The times are becoming how? Evil. So how much he did it now? He said, I'm not giving you 120 anymore. No, I'm giving unto you how much years? 70 years. But as I shared yesterday, a man will live up to 70 years and have only lived 25,555 days. 70 years. Only 25,555 years. And like I say, go to the bank with 25, or walk in a car dealer, or say you're going to buy a car with 25,550 and see if they didn't sell you a 120 Y Datsun. Huh? He ain't coming out with nothing good. Twenty-five thousand five. That's so. That's so small. And yet, still, people think that they have time. Time is a thief, and the devil is deceiving God's people. Why? Because they don't know what the Bible has said about their lives. And when we look at the book of James, chapter fourteen, chapter four, and verse fourteen. James chapter 4 and verse 14. I'm not going to be long again. James chapter 4 and verse 14, but I want to be put, I want to make sure we understand. He said, okay, if we understand. James chapter 4 and verse 14, it says what? Whereas we know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is life? Because many of us think we're here to stay. You know? you know, my mother used to say, people think they're here to turn stone. You're not here to turn stone at all. You have a time and a season upon planet Earth and you got to know. But if you don't know what the Bible has said, then you will live this life and you will make so many mistakes. Why? Because you don't know the Bible. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is life? It is what? Even a vapor. Hmm. That appear for a little time and then what? 
Find a sure way. What is life? We're living on planet earth, but are we lining ourselves to the will of almighty God? Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter. When we look at the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, reading from verses 1 to 3. Now, Ecclesiastes was written by a man called who? Solomon. Anybody can tell me what they know about Solomon? What, what happened to Solomon? He was what? He was the wisest man they said that ever lived. He was who? The wisest man ever lived. He was who? The wisest man ever lived. He was who? The wisest man ever lived upon planet earth. One more time. Who was Solomon? The wisest man. And hear this man's analogy of this world. He says what? The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. What does it say? Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. What profit had a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? What, what do profit? You're gaining the whole world and losing your soul in the end. Are you wise? If you're taking teaching from someone, don't you think it is wise to, teach, to take it from someone who is really wise? And Solomon is saying, everything on earth is vanity and wasting time if it's not lined up with God only in Christ the solid rock we stand that we will have blessed assurance that one day we know where we are going it's only in Christ stay close to God look at Psalm 62 reading from verses 8 through 12 normally I will tell my church please watch carefully don't just read the bible watch the words carefully what does it say verse 8 says trust in him at all times you people pour out your heart before him God is a refuge for us verse 9 surely Men of low degree, in other words, poor people. How many of us go in life? We have poor people. We have poor people. Amen. Men of low degree are what? Vanity. We heard this word used by who? The wisest man ever lived. Men of low degree are vanity. And what he say also? And men of high degree are rich people. You think you have money? And you think you make it? You educated? You the most educated, knowledgeable person you could ever have? God telling you, God saying you're fooling yourself. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is what? Ah, we have Bible scholars here. There is a way that seems right. So men of low degree are vanity. Men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, in the living judgment. That they all together lighter than what? Vanity. No matter what. You know, you, 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 it's, it's vanity. Look at verse 11. What does it say? Trust not in opposition and become not vain in robbery. If riches increases, what? Set not your heart on them. Don't get carried away with this world and the things of this world. Don't get carried away. And a lot of people are living only for the world and what they see and what they think life is all about. And they're failing to realize life is relationship with Almighty God. You must know your God. Yesterday I shared with the people, I let them know, listen to me, what sense it makes going to church and you're not hearing your God. How could God not be speaking to you? Do you know how much times in the Bible, the Bible says, God said, as it began, what it says, and God said, let there be light. God is always speaking. But who is he speaking to? Is he your father or is he your Godfather? 
Do you have a relationship with your God? Can you call him your God? My God. I know when my God is speaking to me. I know when my God is directing my path. I know when, my, and you know what? God speaks to you, but hear what some of us just say. Boy, a vibes tell me. Boy, I get vibes. Something tell me to do so. I, I don't know, and uh, something. But something. God trying to get your attention. Because when you realize, when you obeyed what that voice told you, you know what happened? You realize you're on the right path. God is speaking. Are you listening? Look at Psalms 39, verse 4 and 5. But I have one more scripture to share. Psalms 39, verses 4 and 5. Look what the Bible says here. Lord, what to do? Make me to do mine end and the measure of my days what it is that I may know how frail I am. Do you know how many people are living and they don't even know when they're going to die? I know when I'm going to die. My God will tell me when it's time for me to go. I know when I'm going to die. Why? Because I have a relationship with God. I know when God speaks. Many times I tell my church, I prepare a message and as I reach up there, God says, no, 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 there's not your church, there's my church and I'm going to speak and I'll have church, members of my church, and what time pastor does have to stop? Huh? And change over. Because I listen to God. I have a relationship with him. And God is asking the question, do you know your father's voice? Do you know his voice? Or are you being deceived? Behold, thou hast made my days as an hundred, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether what? Vanity. Normally I will tell my church, tell your neighbor, you can't live without God, you know. Your best friend has to be God, you know. There are times when you are alone, and I know I can speak on behalf of many people. You're home and you want to sleep and you find yourself can't sleep and you want to know what's going on here. Only God, you know. There are times you're going in a place and you're feeling evil around you and you're feeling like, wow, what's going on here? Your fear in your heart gripping you. Let me tell you something. Your peace only comes from knowing Almighty God. Your peace only comes when you know who your God is. When the song was sang this morning, today, I know my Redeemer lives. And great is His faithfulness. We can depend on and trust in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So to close, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, what does the Bible say? Let us hear the conclusion of what? The whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is what? The whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. For God will bring every work. Not some, but every work into what? Judgment. That's the judgment. What have you done with your life? Did you hear the word of God and you went ahead? Go back into your old ways. Or did you hear the word of God and you decided to change? Like on the 25th of November 1987, I heard Pastor Cecil Kwamana preach the word of God right in this church. That time we have benches. Hey, Doro. That, <laughs> that time we had bench. And I sit down right where the song system was. And I heard him make a call. Who wants to give their heart to the Lord? Huh? You know why I can remember the date? The 25th of November, 1987. It was a Sunday. And I heard the gospel for the first time. And when 
he made the call. I said, I'm not going. Because I was, uh, I didn't like the opposite side. <laughs> I love to party. I love to do what I got to do, you know. And he made the call a second time and I said, no, I'm not coming up. No, 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 I'm not coming up still. And he said, okay, I'm making one last call. And a gentleman walked up. And when that gentleman, I said, all right, I get away today. Because I know it's me, he called it, but I ain't going, all right, I ain't coming. You must play trumpet. Right to the corner, day. <laughs> but he said, no, God said, one person still have to come. I said, but well, what's wrong with this man, boy? <laughs> and I said, well, listen, let me go here yes, because I can't hide no more. <laughs> And I walked up and I knelt at the altar right here. And as I walk up, he said, you is the man. And I never knew after all these years I'm going to be pastor in a church. Never knew after all these years. Huh? I would have been used to encourage and be speaking at my brother's home going service. I want to encourage all of us. When I got saved, I was arranging that 19th Franklin with, with, with Ken Professor Fillmore. I was arranging the pan there. We was doing pan in A minor. Okay, I keep forgetting what I'm singing. You know what I'm singing. <laughs> and when I got saved, I said, listen, enough is enough. Let me go and serve God now. And he came home and he told my mother, he said, Miss Corbett, the church fooling your son. They want to take away his talent. He's real gifted. And I remember, she said, you want to talk to he? I come outside and tell Pro, I said, Pro, let me tell you something. Friends could lead you. But you know what he's saying? They can't do what? Take your back. I said, enough of me following friends. It's time for me to serve Jesus. And I walk away from that. I say, enough is enough. I'm giving my gift and talent to God. And listen, when I, if I did stay arranging for that idea from play, I would have still been only arranging panorama. When I give my heart to the Lord, and I, start, I give my gift, and I start to play gospel music, you know what? I reach Paris. England, New York, Jamaica, Barbados. <laughs> and, the, and the list goes on. Just to name a few. You can never outgive God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to make a boast in God, when I was in Trinidad, if I did stay playing pan, I'd be only getting TT dollars. I start to travel and I get us dollars. <laughs> And I get euro dollars. You can never outgive God. I want to really encourage us on this day for my brothers who are going service. Turn your life around. Life is really short. Come on, where, where the Come, Listen, beautiful people of God. God is calling all of us. Why? He's coming back. He went to prepare a place for all of us. That where he is, there we will be also. Jesus is on his way. Look at the signs. Look at the times. Look at what is happening. I shared with us the last time. Yeah, last night. I went to, 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 to counsel at a school, a senior, old tech, to be exact. And the principal is telling me, well, you all came and you were saying, well, boys and girls, welcome, boys and girls. And the principal telling us, this September, from September, you can't say boys and girls no more in the school. The principal, you know. The soup said, what? He said, yes, you can't say boys and girls no more. You have to say gender. Gen imagine that. And you know what? Everyone is calm and normal. 
We call in good evil and evil good. And everyone just accepting what is being dished out. Are we really understanding the signs of the times? Do you know you have a voice? I'm not telling you to go and rebel. But what I'm telling you is when the time comes and somebody wants to call your child a gender, remind them you don't spend nine months suffering with them. I thought the ladies would have clapped there. Don't come to dictate my pace to tell me call my girl child or my boy child a gender. They are either boys or girls. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know who I am. The monkeys know that there's a male and female. Eh? A donkey knows it's a male and female. Eh? Eh? Tell me. Eh? A, a, a tiger, a cat, a kitten. You call it. What other name? What other name? All of them know. Male and female. Only human beings don't know who is male and female. They're more intelligent than us now. Real talk. And you know what is happening in the world? Sit back, relax, and just accept. Yeah? I wish, normally I would tell my church, let them know, not by me. Huh? Not by me. I know what is right and I know what is wrong. Hallelujah. God's richest blessings to you all. Thank you. I pray God we really understand the times we're living in. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God's richest blessings. I'm Reverend Dr. Kelvin Corbett. Thank you for joining us. My behalf, behalf of my brother, Percival. Deborah, be strong. We're here with you. And we're going to win. We're going to make it. You know what I mean? We're going to make it. This too, God know this was coming. And we may not think that we were prepared, but God prepared us for it. He loves us so much. Amen? Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks unto the Holy One. Give thanks. Let's stand before He's given. Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy to the Holy One Give thanks Because He's given Jesus Christ His Son His Son And now And now Let the weak say I am strong And let the poor I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. For one more time, and now, and now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor I'm sensing in my spirit I should make a call. I'm not here today to tell us you don't know God. 
I say you know God. But one thing, you know, I keep reminding myself, if I have a million dollars, I will wish I could have ten. If you have ten million dollars, you'll wish you could have a hundred million. Today I am not saying you don't know God, but this one thing I am saying, let's make sure our names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. An opportunity like this is not passing us by. Percival has gone on. He is with the Lord. I know he died in Christ, but I want to make sure today that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The Bible declares it's a simple thing to do. Surrender your all to Jesus by lifting your hands. Today, with nobody looking around, this is a decision between you and God. You just want to make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If you are out there, nobody looking around, just lift your hands. I am lifting my hands. I want to make sure my name is in the Lamb's book of life. If you want to make sure, just lift your hands. I want to pray and ask God to touch and make sure. You want to make sure your name is in the Lamb Book of Life? Lift your hands and see some hands going up. The Bible says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. And all I am doing today is making sure my name is written. Oh God, I want to pray, but I hear God saying, just wait a few more. Some of us still need to raise our hands. Nobody looking around. This is between you and God. We're just saying, God, write my name. I want to make sure, God, that I'm in the Lamb's book of life. I want to pray. Father, you see those of us who are lifting up our hands. God, we ask you to forgive us of our sin. Wash us through your blood. Cleanse us, God. You are right, spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from us, O God. But restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Thank you, God, for saving us. Thank you, God, for writing our names in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you, God, that if you burst the clouds now, God, we know we are ready to go because we lift our hands. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. Hey, and we lift our hands, acknowledging ourselves to be servants of the Most High God. Thank you, God, for all you have done in our lives thus far, all you're doing and all you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people say, Amen, 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 and Amen. Hallelujah. I hand over to the moderator again. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Corbett. And I trust that there must be something from that message that you would have gleaned. And I take it, all of you or all of us here would say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? All right, you may be seated. And before we get to the next item, the opening of the casket, um, I would like all the Corbett's and the McLean's to come forward. Let's do that quickly so that we can have prayer for you. And in the meantime, I call on Pastor Espinoza. And he would pray for you. Let's do it quickly. The Corbett's and the McLean's. Let's come forward there. And let's all join hands together, you know, because this is, let me tell you, it's like a chain. A link is broken somewhere along the line. And let's all get connected together, you know, because there's unity, no brokenness.
like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever is my lot, you have taught us to say that it is well, it is so well with our souls. We have come into this house to gather in your name and to worship you. We have come into this house to concentrate on you and to worship you. We have come into this house to adore you for you are a God who makes no mistakes. You see all, you know all, and you understand exactly what we need in our time of need. And for this God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We have gathered in this place to celebrate Percival's life, his legacy, his faith, the contributions that he has made to his life, his family, his extended family, to his church, and most importantly, to the kingdom of God. And for this, God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We have gathered at this celebration of life simply to comfort his family and to give them, God, the comfort that can come only from knowing Christ Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. We have come, God, to offer hope and to stir up hope and to engender hope and to give hope that we shall see him again and that we shall be united with him yet again as we sing in the company of the angels whose presence he now enjoys. And so, God, we want to thank you for Percival and we want to thank you for the way he walked among us. He walked, God, as a mighty man. He walked as a great man as the testimonies continue to bear out that this man was a great man. And so today, God, we know that a prince and a great man has fallen in all the land. And for this, God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for the way in which, God, you allowed us to experience him and to see him, to know him as the man that he was. But now, God, we come to the business of praying for this family. We come, God, to the business of praying for these ten siblings who now have one missing among them. We come to pray for the siblings who would pick up phones and texts and reach for him in the days ahead. And there will be no human response from Percival. We come, God, praying for nieces and nephews and cousins and those who form, God, this family that is so distinguished as a family, oh God, that has been nurtured in the things of God and nurtured to care one for the other. And so, God, just as they have been nurtured deeply, oh God, we know, Master, God, that the loss would be felt deeply. And so, God, we pray that the comfort that comes from knowing Christ shall be theirs as well in the name of Jesus. But then, God, we pray for this woman who has stood by Percival's side. This woman who he calls my wife. This woman who he has devoted his life, his ministry, the best of his brain power, the best of his heart, the best of his soul, the best of his spirit. The man who understands that his assignment in life was to take care of this woman that you have created, custom created just for him. And so God, we pray for Deborah in a special way. We pray God that you might stand up in her that you might stand with her, that you might guard her and protect her, oh God, from all hurt, all harm, and all dangers. We pray, God, that the arrows that fly in the daytime and the terrors that will seek to harass her at night and the grip of grief that is about to, oh God, just put its fangs in her soul. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will move by your spirit and by your power and that you would bless this woman with what she stands in need of to be able to grieve the loss of this great man that you have given to her, to know her, to know him as husband, to know him as protector, to know him as the one who indeed was her husband for all of these years. I pray for her, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for every single family member who would feel the impact of his loss 
that you would remind them, oh God, that there is a God who will look out for them. There is a God who will care for them. There is a God who does not sleep, nor does this God slumber. And so late in the midnight hour, Oh God, when the tears are rolling late in the midnight hour, when the mind is roaming late in the midnight hour, when the soul cannot settle down to sleep, God, that you would remind them, oh God, that you are there and that you are only a prayer away and that they can call on you and you will answer with your divine presence God and so God I pray that you would remind them the words of the prophet oh God to lift up your heads oh ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and let the king of glory come in who is the king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle he is the king of glory who shall come and sit shall come and tabernacle shall come and be with those who dare call on the name of the Lord God we trust you today oh God because we put all of our faith and our trust in you some trust in horses and chariots but we the people of God we trust in the name of our God and so God I pray that you would keep us steadfastly trusting you oh God until that day when we shall see Percival again and so God we live with the same faith he lived with and we sing and oh God the songs of Zion oh I want to see him to look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace cares all pass home at last ever to rejoice it is in Jesus name that we pray Amen and amen. Thank you, Reverend Martin. You may be seated. Um, and we would now have the viewing of the body. Um, let's see how we're going to do this. So, <laughs> you, you familiar with it? Well, you you can direct them. Hmm? No, no, this eyes are really a bit crooked. Okay. All right, so we do it this way. We come through the my left hand side, your right hand. We come down that way. Uh, view the body. You can greet the family if you so desire, and we go through that uh, corridor there. We got that? Everybody got it? Okay, so let's do it uh, quickly. Um, the family will be viewing last. So we could start on this side here, down this way. This way and
left side can um, continue, can proceed. Row on the left side. To the back and down the corridor on the Very nice. Your right. Having some great fun. Cheers and thanks very much. some great fun. Cheers and thanks very much.
I have your attention for a moment, please? Um, after, the, after the burial, there would be a repast at number 88 Cedar Drive, Pleasantville, at the old Corbett's residence. I'll repeat that for those who missed it. After the burial, there would be a repast at number 88 Cedar Drive, Pleasantville. They are the old Corbett's resident. Thank you.
Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied. Just to see you glorified Take the stage, Lord And have your way I'm your vessel, Lord And nothing more And when you're done
We're here firstly to commit our brother Percival Emmanuel Corbett back to the grave. And the Bible declares, for this corruptible must first put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. 
So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them who also sleep with Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, for the dead in Christ shall rise first. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. I commend to Almighty God the body of our dear brother Percival Emmanuel Corbett. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, saying the spirit of they that rest their labors and their works do also follow them. Let's just pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's lay the body down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we go get to the heavens, all a day of rejoicing that will be. Let's lay it slow. Let's lay it slow. Let's lay it slow. Let's lay it slow. See Jesus. We will shine and show the victory. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Therefore, based on God's promise in the Holy Bible, I commit the body of Percival Emmanuel Corbett back to Almighty God to the earth. Thus, to thus, hallelujah, and into the blessed hands of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be resurrected, to be resurrected on the day of the rapture. In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest in peace and eternal life. Percival Emmanuel Corbett. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and that shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the stage of the trumpet are over on the other shore, and the road has called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless 
this morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home in the sky, and the roll and fall up yonder I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to set his sun. Let us talk of all in words of love and care. Then when all of life is over and the work of love is done, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Some day, some 
Rejoicing with the angels. God, now we pray that the Holy Spirit.
God, now we pray that your Holy Spirit comfort, your Holy Spirit peace will comfort all of us, God. Watch over Deborah, Lord. Keep us safe, strong, and healthy and blessed, O oh God. For we know, Lord, as we leave, Lord, you are the God who goes with her. So we thank you for all you have done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do. Bless the families and keep us safe. And first of all, until we meet again, we give you to God and we say, Father, thank you for him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Till we meet again. In Jesus' name.
guys. Having some great fun. Cheers and thanks very much. <laughs>